So in today's video, I'm going to do a deep dive into Rare Beauty because you know what? The product line really has grown and I actually realized I have almost everything that the brand has ever launched. There's like two or three items that I'm missing, but for the most part, I can really tell you what is up with Rare Beauty. I actually got this idea because one of my TikTok followers requested this and I thought, hmm, that would be a really good YouTube video. So yeah, I'm posting this on YouTube. <laughs> But if you aren't following me on TikTok, Morgan Turner Makeup, if you look me up, we got Spicy Morgan on there. If you like Spicy Morgan, I talk a lot about products, like my honest spicy opinions. But anyways, this is the full in-depth review of the Rare Beauty makeup line. We have a lot of hits. We have a lot of misses. I like Selena Gomez. I'm not a fan girl. I have no bias on this. So I'm just going to tell you if I like them or I don't. So let's get started. I actually want to first talk about tools. Normally, I would skip the brushes, but these two brushes are amazing that I need to talk about these with you. So I have the Rare Beauty foundation brush and the concealer brush. They're literally the same shape, just different sizes. I absolutely love these for blending out my foundation and my concealer. I'm very, very picky about what brushes I use for complexion. These two pass my tests. I find they don't make my makeup look patchy. I'm a sponge girl through and through, but lately I've been grabbing for these over my sponge. I just feel like I get a little bit more coverage. And yeah, if you don't like brushes, maybe give these a try. I love the size in particular of the concealer brush. I feel like I can really get in there and it does blend the concealer out while still allowing me full coverage. The foundation brush I'll also use to blend out my blush, my bronzer. You'll see that in today's video as well. These I have to mention, normally I wouldn't talk about them, but they're so good that I had to mention them. Okay, <laughs> let's get started with the actual makeup products. We're gonna get started with complexion. So Rare Beauty actually has really, really good primers. I have grown to love this primer in particular. This is the pore diffusing primer. The first time I used this, I actually told you guys I didn't like it. I'm taking it back. I now love this. I think if you have oily skin, you will really enjoy this even more than I do. But I love the way that it smooths the skin and it does have a nice hydration level to it as well. So I feel like this is a great primer for me on days where I'm wearing glowier products. So I want a base that's going to kind of tame that down and also to smooth my skin because the glowy products they show my pores more so that is when I go ahead and use this and I really do feel like it makes a difference so this is a really great primer. Now on the opposite spectrum which is also really great is the illuminating primer. This one I love you can get it in a mini so you can pay less for a little bit of less product. This is a beautiful glowy primer. Now it, it does have a little bit of metallicness with this so I wouldn't necessarily wear this bare all over the skin. It looks pretty if you're going pretty bare face to use this maybe as a highlight because it does give that metallic sheen but this is a beautiful base under makeup if you want the glow to peek through if you're using something like a skin tint and you're feeling extra glowy like you want that oomph to come through this is also really great I find it has a slight hydrating feel to it as well which is something I look for for these glowy primers because sometimes they can feel a little bit drying I don't feel that way about this one so Rare Beauty in general both of the primers that they've come out with I have enjoyed them both thoroughly they do a really phenomenal job in that category and I don't think they get enough attention so I had to talk about these they have two kind of foundation base products and both of them kind of like eh about. So we'll start off with the newest one. This is the Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. I like this. I don't love it. I feel like there are more tinted moisturizers out on the market that I prefer over this. So I have this one on this side of my face and I always really like the way that this looks when I put it on. It doesn't wear as well as other tinted moisturizers. So if I were to put this side to side with another tinted moisturizer that I like, which I have done in the past, I will like the way that this looks in the beginning, but just as the day goes on, my pores start to show through a little bit more. I look a little bit more oily. This just doesn't hold up compared to other similar products that I have. So I don't dislike it. I think it looks really gorgeous on the skin. I just know I have other products that simply perform better. A lot of the products nowadays with complexion, they have included skincare ingredients and I really think that just affects the wear time. This also, because of its consistency, it does show my pores a little bit more, which is fine, but it's just not my favorite. So I like this, but it's not 
something like if we were going to a rare beauty display i wouldn't be like you need to get this same thing goes for their liquid touch foundation i think i'm like on the unpopular side of this i think a lot of people really like this and it's the same situation when i apply this initially i love the way that it looks i feel like it blurs the skin it does a great job of evening it a little goes a long way with this foundation it blends out beautifully I like everything about this foundation when I apply it. As the day goes on, I find it starts to look a little bit more makeup-y on the skin. It looks a little bit heavier. It starts to settle into the fine lines, making my skin look a little bit more aged and dry. So, yeah. I don't know, I feel like if you have really young skin, like teenage skin, you would like this because the wear isn't so pronounced on it. But yeah, on my skin, it just doesn't look as fresh, doesn't wear the best, unfortunately. So again, we're at the Rare Beauty display. I'm not gonna point you towards this foundation. It's just not my favorite. Dang, the direction these are going are really negative, but <laughs> this is actually one of my least favorite things in the line, one of the products that I would not recommend. I think it is such an overhyped product. This is the Liquid Touch Concealer. Like, I actually liked the foundation, even if it doesn't wear the best. This I don't like at all. <laughs> it makes my under eyes look super dry. It goes into the fine lines really, really quickly. Most concealers, like 99% of the concealers on the market, they're going to go into my fine lines. It is what it is, they're there. Makeup is not plastic surgery. But this, I mean, I had to put eyeshadow underneath here to try and cover it and I can just still see how bad they are sinking in and how deeply in the monitor and sometimes you know when makeup goes into these fine lines it like rides with it you know it's like a long for the ride it goes with the movements of your face and that's fine this like separates so you can literally see the line even more pronounced than it is so yeah i don't like this concealer it does not settle well under my eyes okay i have setting powder next and i like this i don't love it again i'm lukewarm about this this has a slight sheen to it so be mindful of that but I, i'll still use it to set under my eyes it's not my favorite set under my eyes but it can be done it's a nice setting powder whenever i use it i don't dislike it i also don't love it either i don't feel like it does anything to benefit my skin. It doesn't smooth it over. It just simply sets the makeup and there's a slight glow to it, which is very pretty. Do keep in mind that this does run dark. So I'm normally a light medium. The light medium here is quite dark. So when I use this, I actually use a very big fluffy brush all over the face. But most of the time I'm reaching for the shade light. I do really enjoy the packaging of this. It's quite mess free. But yeah, it's a it's an okay powder. You're gonna like it, it's gonna do its job, but it doesn't like blur the skin or do anything special that I like my powders to do. Okay, let's move on to something positive because I feel like I've been bagging on the brand when in all actuality, all of those products are like good besides the concealer. This product is simply amazing. This is a product from Rare Beauty that you have to try if you want to try Rare Beauty. These are the bronzer sticks. Incredible, you guys. So I have two shades. One is Happy Soul. This is a shade that is best for my skin tone if you're looking for a skin tone match. And Always Sunny is a little bit deeper, but sometimes I'll use it when I want a little bit more intensity with my bronze. These are extremely emollient. It takes little to no effort to blend these out, especially the Happy Soul shade. I don't know, just a really quick, easy bronzer stick to throw on in the summer. It's definitely one of my favorite bronzer sticks. I reach for it so consistently because I know it's going to take zero time at all to work out and it's going to look good. It works well with all of the foundations that I've tried thus far. It works well with tinted moisturizers. It works well with full coverage foundations. So yeah, these are probably my favorite item that Rare Beauty has come out with. So definitely a must have. Okay, let's move on to her most popular products. These are the liquid blushes. Oh, there's so many. I own five and I have a couple of different finishes. Some are a matte finish and then some are a glowy finish. I really, really do like these and I've learned to like these even more the longer that I've had them. The first initial review that I did of Rare Beauty, I thought these were nice, but it was with caution <laughs> that I warned you. You know, these are extremely pigmented and I just didn't think they were user friendly and I've seen many people online make the big mistake of applying way too much. You literally just need a drop and for that reason, 
reason. I didn't really recommend it at first because it wasn't the most user friendly, but it's a beautiful product. Okay, once you know how to apply it, it is a stunning product and I do recommend it. Just give yourself a little drop and then blend it out. And I just feel like these do last quite a long time considering they are a liquid formula. They blend out really easily and they have a great shade selection. So if you were eyeing these liquid blushes, I definitely recommend them. But of course, maybe take a few trial runs of trying this. Like if you're going to a super important event, I wouldn't throw this on the first time. <laughs> Get used to how much product you need, particularly if you are on the more fair side of skin tones. But the shades you can't go wrong with. The swatches I have here, let me read them off in the order in case you need to know. So at the top we have Bliss, then Hope, then Joy, and then Encourage, and then Believe. And I'm wearing the shade Encourage, and I think it is so beautiful. And they are like quite smoothing and hydrating to the cheeks. So if you have dry skin, I find that they sit so pretty on the cheek and they look juicy. You look like you drank your water today. So those are a really nice product. Now what I don't like from the line, I feel a level of dislike that's the same as the concealer. These are the melting blushes, and I really wanted to like these because I loved the texture. I loved the way that they feel. I have this shade nearly neutral by the way, but these have no use because I just find that they disappear on me in like two seconds. And at that point, what is the point? You know, I will pack this on on my cheeks and I feel like it blends out so beautifully. It looks so nice on the skin. It has kind of like a cream to powder feel to it. And most of the time products that have that consistency do last a long time. With this, it just doesn't. It goes nowhere. Can't find the blush on my face, so I don't recommend this. Liquid highlighters, I think, are a popular product from Rare Beauty, right? I only have one shade, and I don't know if where I'm coming from is just from the shade that I have. Maybe I need to purchase a different shade. I have the shade Mesmerize. This also kind of disappears on me. That is something that I'm noticing a lot with the cream and liquid products. I'll put this on. It looks like it's going to be really pretty. The second I blend it in, like, I can't find it anymore. And maybe it's because this liquid luminizer is too close to my skin tone. I just genuinely feel like I can't really find it. It's it's very subtle. I'm not going to say it's not nice, but it just wasn't what I was expecting. It's not strong enough for me. It doesn't give me what I get when I swatch it. It looks a little different on the face. So maybe I do just need to try different colors, but I'm really, I'm not crazy about this. Eyebrows. There are two eyebrow products in the line. The first product that I'm going to talk about is the Brow Harmony. I do not recommend this. I do not like this. So one side is a pencil and then the other side is an eyebrow gel. Honestly, really, really like the eyebrow gel. The eyebrow gel is very nice. It is tinted. I think it does a nice job holding the brows considering it's tinted. I like the spoolie on it. It's a really nice brow gel. For a while, I was grabbing for this product specifically for the brow gel. Let's talk about the eyebrow pencil. I just find this to be way too thick and creamy. The pencil itself is quite thick. I tend to prefer a thinner brow pencil, but what's working against this the most is how creamy it is to where it makes my eyebrows look extremely messy. So I can get away with a bigger brow pencil as long as it's a little bit more dry and powdery and easy to blend out. With this, it's so creamy. I find that whenever I brush it out, it goes everywhere. My eyebrows look a mess. There's no definition. There's no apparent brow strokes of trying to mimic hair. I really, really dislike this pencil. It's one of the worst eyebrow pencils that I've tried, but it's lucky that it has that brow gel on the other side because that's a saving grace to that product. Product. The other product, I like this one a little bit more. Yesterday, I did go to Sephora and I picked up a few items that I was missing from the line and I tested them yesterday and today. So I am fairly new to using this product, so keep that in mind. This is the Shape and Fill Duo. This has been on my radar for a while. I didn't need it but this was a perfect excuse for me to pick it up, so I was excited, and it's really cool how this works. It's nice and tiny, you can fit it everywhere. So you open it up, you even have a mirror and the two powders, and then you pull this out and you even have a little brush, and this is pretty good. I've been using the brush. So one side I noticed is like kind of more of a pomade feel, a really dry pomade. It could pass as a powder if I didn't see the consistency on it, and the other side is a powder that has little to no pigment, which is a really great thing for the 
the brows. I like this product. I don't love it. I still prefer like my e.l.f. Brow Quad and my ABH Brow Duo. I think they have a little bit more pigment to them, which allows me to create more of a brow stroke. Whereas this, it's a little too sheer, even with the pomade. I still get very, very pretty soft brows, but I do feel like I have a little less precision with this formula compared to my favorite brow powders, but I still think it's really nice for a quick and easy brow. It's great for travel. I do actually really recommend this. Even though there are powders I prefer more, I think the packaging is just so functional and great. Like I said, to travel or throw in your purse and compact, I love that aspect about this. So this is a solid product. Moving on to eyeshadows. I do have one liquid eyeshadow. I love this product. This is a hidden gem from the brand. Nobody talks about this. It's called the liquid eyeshadow. Mine is in the shade Nearly Nude. I think that this lasts all day. It's very easy to blend out. It's quick for a, like a one and done eye look. I also will use this as blush. Even though it's not advertised as such, it's so pretty the monochromatic look that you can get having this all over the lid and then blending it out on the cheeks. And it is really easy to use. That's why I'm able to blend it out as blush. So it lasts a long time. The color that I have is very, very pretty, super easy to use and multifunctional as well. So again, if you're traveling, just throw this into your bag. It's not gonna break. This and this, like Rare Beauty, they did it love that so favorite like underrated product from the brand I did yesterday pick up the eyeshadow palette I didn't have it I have a couple eyeshadow palettes from a holiday collection a couple of years ago that came out that were like kind of ill-fitting with the brand but I loved them in the last year they came out with the true to myself eyeshadow palette I didn't bother picking it up the colors didn't inspire me but I did take the opportunity to pick it up yesterday since I was like well this is the only eyeshadow that's currently available I have to try it and it's a cute color story like I said nothing that I needed but honestly you guys I don't like this eyeshadow palette I thought it was going to be solid because I did love the eyeshadows that came out over the holidays a couple years ago but yeah this is a complete different formula it's a little bit more traditional with the powder mattes the other one that I had was like all satins but I don't like it I don't recommend this you need to walk away from the rare beauty stand and buy eyeshadows from another brand the mattes were okay they're a little bit sheer which I think is great for beginners and fits the aesthetic of the brand but when I did get to the darker shades they got a little harder to work out they got a little patchy nothing crazy I was able to make it work but I wasn't overly impressed with the mattes the shimmers were straight up disappointing to me these two over here to the side they're fine they're a little lackluster but whatever rare beauty is not about dramatic makeup that's fine it's these two shadows that I'm like what were they thinking so this shade right here really really like flaky you don't get much pigment from it it's in the center of my eyelid right now it just it doesn't get and it's messy and what the heck is this in the middle <laughs> so this is supposed to be like a press glitter first of all that is not rare beauty's aesthetic but whatever why would they put the worst shadow in this giant big thing in the middle if they were gonna make this the focal point it better be good quality and it's not it's just a dry mess I tried giving it the benefit of the doubt today I put it on my lid at the end I didn't get it on camera it did not stick to the lid it is so patchy this is one of the worst press glitters I've ever tried it's a shame that it is like the focal point of this palette anyways yeah I'm sorry I don't like it the look is pretty but it's nothing special at all I couldn't get any depth to build up with this palette <sighs> I'll show you how I did it though so I start off with this shade right here in the inner half of the crease the shade was fine I found it blended away pretty quickly so I did have to keep throughout the entire look going back and rebuilding it up but that's fine and then I use this shade right here this I thought was pretty it was a little difficult to blend out nothing crazy but I do like this shade I think this would make a very pretty one and done kind of eyeshadow look then I went in with this shade to deepen things and that's when the blending got a little funky it didn't even end up getting that deep anyways but whatever <laughs> and then I used the shade on the inner half this is a fine shade I like it it's good and then I used my finger in this shade and this is when it was like really messy you really went downhill from this point really no pigment couldn't stick to my lid and I did this off camera but I did try and put a little bit of the glitter on the inner half of my eyes and I don't know what were the reviews positive on that palette I didn't really pay attention to it when it came out but I don't recommend that 
at all. And this is the last item that I picked up yesterday, so I don't have a ton of experience with this. This is the Perfect Strokes Matte Liquid Liner. It's odd. Yesterday when I used this, it applied very gray. And I was like, ooh, I don't like this today. I guess it liked the eyeshadow it was going over more, and it actually applied nice and black. I think yesterday the shadows that I used had too much texture to them. It did not like that. Today it applied a lot better. I actually am surprised. I like the the applicator of it. It's like a brush liner. I thought it would be too fat, but I actually find I'm able to get very, very precise strokes with this, and it's very easy for me to create a wing, keep it thin, make it thicker. I have a lot of control with this. The formula isn't too watery or anything, so it doesn't seep into those micro lines in the eyes. I think I like this. It's just odd because yesterday I did not like it. I was like, why is this not black enough? But today I did not experience that, so I think I like it. Not the best liner. Wasn't love at first sight, but I think it's nice. Moving on, we have the Rare Beauty Mascara. I love this mascara. I think this mascara is great. It does need a little bit of time to dry up a little bit, but once it does, you guys, I'm not working with any eyelashes here, and look, you can actually see my eyelashes. I don't have any falsies on. With what I start with, this is really impressive. I find it gives me a little bit of volume, but mostly length is what this gives me, and I feel like it gives really, really nice length, and it separates the lashes pretty well also. This is actually one of my favorite mascaras mascaras to have launched in the last few months. I definitely recommend this. Okay, so the final two products. These are the matte lip creams. I have two shades. I quite like these. These to me are more so of a lip blur. So they have kind of that soft matte finish to them. And you have to build these up a little bit because it's very easy not to get an even coverage. But I think it's just great to throw on for every day. And that's what I'm noticing a lot with the Rare Beauty line. Just a phenomenal line for everyday makeup. And I think these are a nice, comfortable, soft matte formula just to give your lips a little bit of color. They're not gonna give you definition. You might need to go in with a lip liner if you like the look of Define Lips. But yeah, just a super comfy matte lip to throw on. I like it. I actually went through a phase with these where I was wearing these every day. So yeah, these are good. I approve of these. And then the last product that I have to talk about it's an interesting product. I don't have a lot of it. It's like a gloss bomb. So I have mine in the shade Nearly Mauve, and I think it is super comfortable to keep in your purse. Like, I literally had to pull this out of my purse. It does not give you a lot of coverage, and it really is weird how it is a hybrid between a lip gloss and a balm. I don't really like how this looks on top of a lip color. I like to wear this over bare lips, but it just gives like a tint of color to the lips. It feels thinner than a balm, but thicker than a lip gloss. It, it is the perfect hybrid between a gloss and a balm, and that's why it's perfect just to throw in your purse to give your lips some hydration and a little bit of a tint to them. Very, very pretty, but I do find if you put it on top of like, say the soft matte lip cream, it kind of destroys that color underneath and moves it around. So definitely use this over bare lips, but it is really nice if you're looking for something hydrating and with color to put over your lips. I like that a lot, so. You know, there's a few things to note about application with it, but I do really enjoy that. I know it may seem like I don't like Rare Beauty. I actually think they have a very good line. I would direct you most towards the primers are fantastic, the cream bronzers, the liquid blushes are my favorite, liquid eyeshadows underrated, and I think they have very solid lip products and the mascara is great. And then the rest of the things, for the most part, none of them are bad. They're just kind of in the middle. You know, I just think that there are products that I prefer more than some of the products that they sell, but overall I think Rare Beauty is a great bet for everyday makeup. If you're just an everyday makeup gal, you wanna get your makeup on nice and quick, I think Selena Gomez did a phenomenal job with that. So let me know down below your favorites and least favorites from Rare Beauty if you've tried anything. I hope that this video was helpful. And thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.